Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of my podcast, Is Breakfast Included? How you guys doing? Good? Good. 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 Uh, I just got back from Los Angeles. Uh, we The band put on a show on the rooftop of the Astor Hotel. Don't Google it. It's not there. Well, it is, but not yet. Anyway, a lot of hard work went into this show this week. Uh, it went off without a hitch. It's a great show. You could probably find videos and pictures of it online. That being said, my guest today, we've been trying to get together since November. Uh, she's super busy. She's the lead singer and founder of the band Laura K. She's an apprenticing tattoo artist and a full-time hairstylist. She actually works a 40-hour work, 48-hour workday. She's super busy. Anyway, she called me right before I left and said, hey, I have time tonight. Let's get together. Let's do this interview. Uh, we talked about how she got started in music, her aspirations in the beginning, where she'd like to see the band uh, move forward. Um, they're currently on tour right now with Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum. So if they're in your area, check them out and check out their new album, Swim Pool Eternity. Uh, this was a great conversation. I highly suggest you check out the band, you listen to it, and let me know what you think. All right, guys, let's check it out. Dahlia Knowles. Dahlia, tell everyone who you are. Okay. Hi, I'm Dahlia Knowles. I'm uh, the founding member of Lorelai K. Um, I'm 25 and I live in Dallas. Right on. Uh, when did you start playing music? I started playing really early. Um, I started learning how to play piano and I started singing in choir whenever I was like in elementary school. And um, I've just pretty much been making music ever since. Did you grow up in Dallas? Yeah, um, I grew up up in Flower Mound and then lived in Denton and then now Dallas. So cool. basically, yeah, Dallas my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> it's all one big backyard, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you come from a musical family? Parents, brothers, sisters? My parents aren't musical at all, but my brother is. My brother is like super musical. He's probably more musical than I am, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> and so when did you write your first song? Oh, I was probably like, I don't know. 13, 14, something, something around there. I remember starting to write songs. Yeah. Like whenever I hit teenage head and shit started uh -huh. getting terrible. <laughs> what was it called? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> um, once you started writing songs, how long did it take before you started performing in front of audiences or did you put together a band or did you jam with some people? You know, I always knew that I wanted to be like a lead you know what I mean? Like the the the, the person in a yeah, band. Yeah, you know the what artist. I mean? Yeah, the artist. Or the, as they say in the industry, the principal. The principal, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I always knew I wanted to be that. Um, so I started Lorelei as a solo project whenever I was 17. And I started playing like house shows in Denton um, kind of around then, 17, 18. House shows. That's a big thing here in Denton. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah. yeah I haven't been to a house show in many years now but, right on and but did, yeah that was the, my start i guess so did it kind of start like that were you just doing house shows did it pick up pretty quick or did you have to kind of like prove yourself because denton's a rough town man mm -hmm. for bands i've been here for a long time i don't know i feel like it was multifaceted like in a lot of ways i wasn't really ready whenever i started i just kind of started you know what i mean mm -hmm. like i wasn't like it's not like I went to UNT for music or anywhere for music or anything. I um, I'm did like, you go to UNT? No, no. Okay, I'm a uh, community college dropout. <laughs> <laughs> so you're like me. I was just a Denton trans. I I just came here mm -hmm. for the music scene. Yeah, I just kind of landed here. Um, and this is like the town that I like started Lorelei and um, sort of like got my chops performing and everything. Um, because I performed here for years before I performed anywhere else. Like, See. years. Like, it had to be, like, three or four years of just playing shows in Denton. And then suddenly I started touring. So you went from, like, shows here in Denton to, like, everywhere else? Yes, basically. Um, you have a really good working relationship with Michael Briggs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Michael. I was introduced to him through a friend of mine. And then after, uh, whenever someone, I hear, I, somebody introduced me to somebody and I hear that name, 
-hmm. Like after they tell me, then I hear the name here. It's kind of like when you're driving and you go like, oh, that's a cool Dodge Challenger. And then every car you see is a Challenger. Mm -hmm. I started hearing Michael's name. He worked with... um, my friend Mike Doty worked with Leah Lane yeah, I, and Rose Gordon. Yeah, yeah, and then you have a long-standing working <laughs> relationship with him. How in how yeah. uh, how important is he to the Laura, to Laura like Kay? He is like the backbone of Laura like Kay. <laughs> <laughs> like every single piece of music that's ever been released online has been touched in some way by Michael. Um, he's um, you know been recording my music and producing it for a while now, like since 2015. And, um, he's been a member of the band since like 20, 2018, 2019, somewhere around there. And so do you guys co-write everything together? I write everything. Um, I write everything and then I bring it to the band and, um, people who are much better at playing their instruments than me. Do you play guitar, piano? What do you do? Um, my chief instrument is piano. Okay. But I play a little guitar when I don't have nails on. And um, often <laughs> How often is that? Yeah, I mean, uh, like a month <laughs> out of the year. <laughs> um, so my, you, you have this working relationship with Michael. He's in your band. Uh, is it hard for him to make time for the band because he's so busy? Um, we're all really busy. Um, so I, I would say that he's super dedicated to the band Mm -hmm. um even though he is like a very very busy person he's working with everyone and producing a lot of different work at the same time but no i'd say he's like very dedicated and and like i never have a problem like getting getting everyone in the same room i guess i guess we like the music that we play (laughs) um uh he of course produced your first EP. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it Holy, Holy Holding? Holy Holding. <laughs> yeah. And he he's produced everything, right? Mm-hmm. Between that EP and Be the Doll, your first full length, what did you learn? Um, Holy Holding was like all the songs that I was kind of talking about, uh, all the songs that I played at house shows, like like literally just like four chords and some like melodramatic lyrics and um, just me singing. And that was like it. And then I realized pretty quickly sort of as time went on, um, that I wanted to make music that sounded like pop music. Mm-hmm. Um, and then So Be The Doll was like the pop record. Um, and <laughs> the difference between Holy Holding and Be The Doll is like huge. Like they're completely different. Right on. You know, and when, when you say you wanted to make the pop record, did you want it to make it a more accessible to... Um, <laughs> so I think I confused... Um, I, I don't think I ever meant to make like an accessible record with Be the Doll. Um, I just wanted it to be like what I imagined, I guess myself as a pop star would sound like. Okay, you know what I mean. Does that yeah. does that make sense at all? It does. It does. Can you explain that a little bit more? Though? <laughs> <laughs> like I wanted to be um, at the time. I mean, I was really young whenever we made the Be the Doll. Like I was like eighteen when we were recording it, and nineteen when it came out. And um, at the time, I was still deep in love with, like, all of my pop stars that I grew up with, like, Gaga and Cher and, like, all of those sort of inspirations. So I wanted to do that, but with my music um, and perform as a solo act and um, do it with these, like, slightly more alternative style pop songs. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, a little bit more, like, dark wave. Um but still, like, very pop-influenced. Okay. So coming from the, the mentality that you wanted to be a solo artist, you wanted to be uh, the person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the principal. The principal. Yeah. <laughs> How hard was it to put together a band and make it a band? Um, There was, like, a lot of challenges whenever it came to making the band because, um, like, the sound was changing so much. Um. I guess, like, kind of around the time that I was doing Lightbender, um, the sound changed, like, completely again. And um, we had, I think I've had, like, like, uh, it took a really long time to find the right drummer. It it took a really long time to find the right guitarist. um, And it was, like, a mixture of, like, finding people who like could dedicate their time to my project. Mm-hmm. And then also um, people that worked well with the project too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the whole like reason and intention of getting 
the band together was to have like a fuller sound on stage and to be more like have more presence on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it did take quite a while to yeah. find, find the was right Was that people. because you were bringing in guys who were interpreting the songs the way they played them? I had one person who was like that. <laughs> <laughs> that now the, the, the lineup right now is a very cohesive lineup. It, it sounds is. like. Did they record the, the last album? Yeah, they were, they were all on Swimming Pool Eternity. Yeah. 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 So where did the name come from? Swimming Pool Eternity? No, the name Lorelai K. Oh, Lorelai K. Um, and okay. that's my next question. Okay, okay cool. So Lorelai K, um, I got the name Lorelai whenever I was 16 and I was on a trip to Germany. And um, there's like this German myth of a siren that sits on top of a rock and brushes her long, beautiful hair and lures men to their deaths. And I thought she was dope. And I don't know, I liked the name a lot. I liked the three syllables and... Um, the way it like rolls off the tongue kind of, yeah. and, uh, I've always thought it was like a really sexy name. So yeah. I kind of stuck with it. And then K is just for my last name is Knowles. So it's, you know, okay. just the K. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Pretty deep thinking for a 16 year old. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> hey. I'm 50 and I don't think that deep. <laughs> I, I would be know. like, oh, that's cool. And then just keep walking. I mean, the that's cool thing was kind of it, too. And then it's just always been, like, it's just always stuck. Like, I don't know. Yeah. There's never been. I mean, the only time I ever thought about changing the name was to Lorelai and the K-Holes whenever I got the band <laughs> together. And then I was like, that's fucking stupid. I'm not doing that. How did they feel about it? Did you they, ever... they didn't want to be the K-Holes. <laughs> um, what would you label Lorelai K's sound? And um, whenever people ask me in passing, I either say that it's like alternative pop music or it's um, like post punk or dark wave or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Do you ever you know. get comparisons to uh, Lana Del Rey? I well willingly accept any comparisons to Lana Del Rey. That's really? that she's like my she's one of my ones for sure. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Her vocals and her. Her lyricism and um, her like approach to music has just like always been super super inspiring to me. Cool, cool. Yeah, she's pretty cool though. She is dope. Yeah, she's so cool. Um, you signed with Idol Records. Mm -hmm. You put out your album "Swimming Pool Eternity" sure in did. February. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been listening to the album. Then this is just me. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I come from a different time, but. Um, I don't. I didn't read the lyrics. I just listened to it. And it's really cool, but it's very watery. Mm -hmm. uh, was that intentional? Yeah, yeah. Was a lot it? of lot of atmosphere and a lot of like yeah. water being the thing. Like a lot of yeah. like ebbs and flows and like a lot of crashing too. A lot of wetness in yes. there. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Yeah. And then definitely. as you were on your way over, I was listening to it again, and I thought, mm -hmm. yeah, that I heard it correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watery right. for sure. Definitely. Cool. How does it feel being signed to Idol? Uh, it's really cool. I mean, I've wanted to, like, that was, like, one of my biggest dreams for the longest. Like, I've always wanted to be assigned to a record label. And um, I don't know. I think it's, like, even cooler that, like, he's just, like, this friend of mine that I get to see in, at shows and stuff. Like, the person who runs Idol Records. Irv. Irv, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, like, a really cool guy. And um, it just felt like a really big accomplishment for the for the band and for me and for everything. Yeah. Right on. Well, um, once you released your second, your first full length, I mean, you just mm -hmm. blew up. You were really playing all of, off? yeah, yeah. I was. You playing were playing everywhere. all over Dallas. You were overplaying. I was a certain way extent. overplaying. Um, yeah. <laughs> my next question, and you can tell me you don't want to talk about it at all. Yeah. Uh, you're female. You're transgender. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's hard enough for female artists as it is. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for trans, for trans artists? Yeah. Um. In regards to just like playing shows and in being regards like a public to person, public person. In in regards to being, uh, I'd want it to come off like to be taken seriously. You to know, be there's, taken there's seriously, a lot of old school thinkers out there. Yes, definitely, and especially in like a city like Dallas, it's you very quickly find your like tribe or whatever, mm -hmm. and the people that fall outside of it, you don't even fuck with, and you don't even care to win over you yeah. know what i mean yeah that's kind of my like i have a very game face and i'm like let me just find the people that actually want to hear this music yeah. and let me find the people that actually want to support someone like me and just focus on them yeah. you know what i mean yeah uh so 
I mean, it's the same way, like, in high school, whenever I was, like, bullied for being, you know, a freaky trans chick. Like, it's the same thing there. It was, um, I don't know, you just, like, every everything that comes at you negatively, you just have to kind of, like, let wash over you and just focus on, like, the good and focus on the people that are Yeah, you got to be pretty you. strong, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. I've never thought of it as strong. I just thought of it as necessary. You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah, that's it's not a, like yeah, you're that's... not, I don't have to be like a super strong person. I just have to navigate life in a way that I just have to survive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. So I've never thought I was like a strong person. Really. Well, you are. Uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't mind, we talk about that for a yeah, little bit. No, no, no. Um, it's kind of lost my train of thought. No, you're good. I'll edit that out. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye train of thought. Yeah. Um, as a as a transgender, educate me on what I should trans woman. Trans woman. As a yeah, trans yeah. woman, are you expected to be very vocal about the community, or do you just want to be accepted as an artist and have that take a back seat? Yes, it's. I'm. Uh, I've run into that problem a lot through the years um, with interviews and with like any type of article, any type of. Um, anything like that. It, it, um, a lot of the times I get asked like about my opinions on like, like politics or like about like, especially regarding like trans issues and everything. And I'm, I don't ever, I've never considered myself an intellectual person or a person that has like the kind of the, the kind of mind that it requires to be a politician or any type of activist or anything. Um, so it's, it's, always a bit awkward because I'm like yeah I mean I am I just I'm an artist that happens to be trans Mm -hmm. and I would much rather like talk about the art than I don't know just like a a state of being that I happen to incorporate you know embody does it come up in every interview yeah Yeah. (laughs) are you tired of talking about it no it's okay it's okay um I haven't done an interview in a while so any question is cool okay (laughs) uh What's your favorite movie? What's my favorite movie? I'm not a film person. I'm not a film buff. Um, one my time partner I was on a, would love you. She hates movies. Yeah, I was I was on a first date um, like a year ago, and I was really nervous. And I asked him a question. I was like, so are you like into film? And I'm, I'm not even into film. Like, I don't even know why I like asked that question. It was just like a, like, here's my nervous little bubble question or whatever. But I don't know. What's, what's my favorite? favorite film i don't have one i don't <laughs> good answer is that okay <laughs> yeah it's perfect i don't, I don't know per- i was trying to i was trying to like uh come out of the seriousness because um i think you would agree like i think it's important for you to talk about yeah uh, of course being a trans female uh yeah. but it shouldn't be all about that right because right. your music is kick-ass thank you and Thanks. and that's coming from an old fogey like me who's really hard to, you know um, and when I went to, I had no idea. So I just heard your stuff and, and, and Leah told me. And then when I started reading about mm-hmm. you to, to do some research, that's when I found out. Yeah. And so I would have never known. Yeah. So had I didn't known, we would have just been talking about your music. But I just felt right. it was important to. Well, and it is important to talk about because like so much of my lyrics have to do with transitioning and being a trans person so it's not like I can just like like I only write about my lived experience like Mm -hmm. I don't write stories I just write about myself typically and um being trans is like a huge part of that so it's not like I can just completely like shove it away and be like oh I just hate talking about it (laughs) because it's like literally a fundamental piece of my identity you know what I mean and you recently went through your final transition right Uh uh-huh yeah um how you feeling Good. Um, are, are you happy with the results? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Cool. Um, it, uh, it was. I mean, it was actually a pretty cool time. I just got to chill at my parents' house and like hang out with my mom for like a few weeks and just yeah. recover and not have to deal with um, the outside world for a little bit. So mm-hmm. it was actually like nice. I don't know. It was right on. Cool. One more question about that, and then we'll move yeah. on. How did your family? Was your family very supportive of of you? <sighs> Mixed bag. Um, so, like, 
as of right now, everyone is really cool. Like, mm-hmm. including my my mom, my dad, everyone in my family is like, and my brother, and and like my future sister in law, and like my my extended family, and everyone is like really dope now. But it was a it was a transition for them as well, I guess. Like it was really hard at first, especially for my dad. And um, there's like a lot of trauma there <laughs> that. Uh, that I've written a lot about, that I've okay. put into my music a lot. And your friends were very supportive? Yeah. Well, I mean, the friends that weren't supportive weren't friends. So you know what I mean? It's yeah. just like, okay, bye. See you later. <laughs> yeah, we all have those. Right? Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. They all say they're there till they need to be yeah, there. Yeah, Fairweather friends. Um, moving on. You've yeah. released this album. You're about to start yes. a tour. Yes. Let's talk yes, about I, it. Yeah, I'm excited. It's it, it feels like it's been so long since we've been on the road, since it was literally like almost exactly two years ago, right before the pandemic, whenever we got back from um, our last West Coast tour with Rose Garden Funeral Party. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, so it's, it's just like we're really ready to get back out there. We're actually, for this tour, um, it's kind of special because it's just me and Michael doing a duo set. Okay. Yes. So it's it's a little bit different. They specifically requested, uh, Princess Goes to the Butterfly Museum specifically requested that we had a, like a minimal setup and a smaller, more compact, compact, yeah, yeah stage setup. So it's just going to be me and Michael, um, which we've been rehearsing that a lot because it's, it's slightly different. So we're playing a few songs from Swimming Pool Eternity, but we're also playing some unreleased stuff and we're also playing some really old stuff. Um, and we're, we're just rethinking it for the format of it just being me and him. And how many Um, dates is it? It's 10 dates. And it's where? It's, uh, four dates in California. So LA, Oakland, like pioneer town, and then, (laughs) uh, somewhere else in California. And then we're heading like, uh, like Washington and Oregon and yeah, 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 Northwest. And then we're going to cut back down through like Boise and Denver on the way back to Dallas. Okay, cool. Do you have anything else planned for this year other than the West Coast dates? Um, well, we just uh, got onto uh, the roster at Rocky Road Touring. Um, so we're hoping to um, work with them more this year, hopefully in the fall or winter, do another U.S. tour of some sort, okay. some shape or fashion. Mm-hmm. And hopefully that time with the full band, not just with me and Michael. Nice. Um, with every album, Laura K is changing Mm-hmm. Is that a goal? Is that to not be the same? I mean, be the same artist, but kind of continue. I, I would call you experimental, but it's not because it's musical. You're not Sonic Youth and just playing out of tune. Right. We're not, just playing, <laughs> we're not of, just playing whatever. Yeah. You're playing music, but it's very experimental, but it's very sure. musical. Do you plan on continuing that trend of just... Yeah. it's not like It's not like whenever I start writing a new album... I'm like, I'm going to go for this genre or like, I'm going to do this type of music this time around. It's just sort of like, um, I start writing the songs and putting them together and making the demos and, um, they sort of sort of start shaping out their own sort of little sub genre. Right on. Um, so it's never planned. I'm not like, again, I'm not like, a evil mastermind, like with like a, like super, it's not premeditated. Smart game plan yeah, or anything. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> like a intellectual person at all. So it's just like sort of. But you are attack. because your lyrics are pretty. Uh, you, you know. I don't know. I guess so. <laughs> so you are. You're, you're. You know. Maybe musically intellectual. Sure. Sure. I'll take it. You're yeah, very like self-deprecating that. about your talent. I. I guess I am. Yes. <laughs> I'm calling you out, Dolly. Oh God. I'm calling you out. Um. Well, um, what is, what is, uh, if, if by chance the opportunity arose for you to be the artist and they said, Hey, like, we like your band, we like your music, but we like you, you know, (laughs) come with us. Would, how hard would it be to make that decision? And would your band understand if you left or would you want to, would you fight for your band? God, I've never even thought about that. I really genuinely. Let me tell you something. You better start thinking. Really? You guys are good, and you have this presence that, and just like I told Leah, it's like you guys are, you know, to use a. a it's. I hope you don't take this derogatory. 
you guys are a couple of bad bitches, man. No, totally. Like you guys don't take no shit. You're doing it your way. And 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 I hope you didn't take that the wrong way. No, not at all. People will probably message me and go, Why did you say that? But and I'm not saying you're bad. <laughs> I'm not saying that no, that, that, that someone's going to ask you to leave your band, but there's that possibility because you you're a star, man. I'm telling you right here in in my house that you're a star. I try. I you know, to, you know, I go for a star power. That's most certainly a thing. And in I my know life. Michael's a driving force in this yes. project. Mm-hmm. He's everything. Like I said, I don't really know him. I just hear his name a lot, and I hear the stuff he puts out, and I'm yeah. like, wow. Yeah, I mean, and, he's incredible. And what I love about this about is I came up in a time where it was all a competition. Mm -hmm. This band, oh, we're going to draw more than you. We're going to get better shows. But you guys, all you guys are just, you work together. Mm -hmm. And he's kind of like the centerpiece of it all. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he is like the centerpiece of music in Denton and DFW. He's literally like it. Like he's, he is God. No, I'm just kidding. He's not, but. (laughs) So um, answer my question. What are you going to do when they ask you? <laughs> I was avoiding it. Um, I don't know. It's, um, yeah, it's not something I've thought about a lot, but I would feel weird just like abandoning my boys because I'm so close to them. Um, that's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. I, my my boys are like everything to me now. Um, and the music that we've made together is like kind of, irreplaceable yeah. and i don't know I, I couldn't see myself just being like yeah fuck them <laughs> let me just bounce. well uh i've wanted to meet you for a while i wanted to talk to you for a while and i think when the time comes you're gonna have that power to say my boys are coming with me yeah i mean that's so, kind of the plan right on as long as they're coming as long as they're cool with it and they're dedicated and they're in it then absolutely right. they're they're coming with me right wherever on. we go right on if you weren't doing music man is there anything else you wanted to do I'm doing a lot. Um, so I am a hairstylist by trade, and then I'm also an apprentice at a tattoo shop as well. So I'm learning how to be a tattoo artist as well. Um, and ultimately, my goal is to have a life where um, I get to tattoo and tour whenever I feel like it. It's kind of the goal. Cool. Because my loose painting of what my future looks like is like touring sometimes, tattooing sometimes. Oh, yeah. You know? That's kind of... No. You can tattoo anywhere too. Yeah, exactly. And I can cut hair anywhere too yeah. if I really need to. I need yeah. the, the trifecta. Uh, yeah, the trifecta. <laughs> yeah, I know. Whenever I describe, like, whenever I'm on like Tinder or something and I'm talking about like what I do, I feel like I don't sound like a real person anymore because I'm like, yeah, I'm a hairstylist, like, you know, 40 hours a week. And then I'm also a tattoo artist. And then I'm also the front woman of this band that tours. And like, you know, yeah. there's also this whole side of me. And then. And we're you know. currently asking for 48 more hours in a day. Yes, literally. <laughs> literally. God, what I would do. Um, I know I said I wasn't going to talk about this anymore, but if there was anyone listening right now that's kind of struggling with that identity and how to approach it, what would you tell them? Because you started transitioning early. I, I started transitioning when I was 16. 16. What yeah. would you tell that person? Like, If I could tell a 16-year-old what to do, I would tell them to like suck it up, buttercup. What would you tell... 16 year old dog. me yeah. i would tell her suck it up buttercup and um like i would basically lay out my exact diagnoses of like who i am as with my identity and with my mental illnesses and be like here's your little starter pack of shit that you got to deal with um you, you got to start dealing with it early because like no one else is going to do it for you you know what i mean like yeah uh, like basically buck up and 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 start killing it as as soon as possible. You know what I mean? I do. I do. I get it. I, like I said earlier, you're very self-deprecating, but I think you're very brave. Oh, thank you. And I think you're very strong and you're fucking talented. Thanks. So, thank and you. I don't often say the fuck word on the podcast. Oh, I've been saying the fuck word <laughs> on the podcast this whole time. <laughs> so well, um, uh, just one more question. Okay. Yeah. Maybe, maybe two. Uh, I don't know if you've listened to my podcast. It's called Is Breakfast Included? And if breakfast was included, Dahlia, what would you have? What would I have at breakfast? Yeah. Ooh, like an acai bowl. Like a, like a granola situation with yogurt. <laughs> you know, I always thought those were real healthy, but they're just loaded with sugar. No, it's just sugar. <laughs> it's just sugar. But they're good. 
I would do that and like black coffee at the same time. Right on. They kind of right they don't balance each other at all at all, but that's what I would bring to breakfast. Where can people find you on social media? Um I'm at Laura Like K. The O is a zero. So L Zero R E L E I K. Uh-huh. Um on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, you can find me at laurelikehay.bandcamp.com for my music. You can find me as Laura Like Hay on Spotify, Apple Music, all of that as well. Go oh, buy and the then laurelikehay.com. <laughs> yeah. Does it link to everything on Laura It links like to K? everything. Yeah. Go to laurelikehay.com. That's that's the mission cool. for, for the listeners. Just Any last like words? Um, partying. Partying. My <laughs> yeah. name is Dolly and I like to party. Yeah, my name is Dolly and I like to party. Right on. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Yeah. I know we've been trying to do this for for forever, yeah. For forever. Since I think November. Yeah, forever. <laughs> but uh thank you. I'm glad I got to do this. Yeah. Uh, me thank too. you for coming by. Thank you for yeah. your time. And man, I mean everything I say. Like, just get ready. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm ready. So all right. Let's, Thanks. Let's do it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right on, Dahlia Knowles of Lorelei K. You can find them online at Lorelei K with the O being a zero on Instagram, Dahlia Knowles on Facebook, Lorelei K on Facebook. Uh, they have a band camp site. Check them out. Buy their stuff. If they're coming near you, go check out the show. Buy some merch. Support, support, support these independent artists, all of them. Beyonce don't need your money. All right, guys. <laughs> I am done. I will talk to you next week. Have a great day.